My name is Malachi Ling. I'm an electrical engineer at Wichita State, finishing up my senior year in the uh, senior design project. We're working with the United States Air Force and more specifically McConnell Air Force Base to build an autonomous vehicle for tasks on base including humanitarian and security tasks in the future. We have retrofitted an ATV with multiple equipments for autonomous action, uh, LIDAR for obstacle detection, and we're also looking to do more obstacle detection in the future. We're gonna do a little bit of a demo today to show you guys the progress that we have made and what you'll see going forward. My name is Jimmy Vu. I'm the facilitator of Build Team 6, and I am also the only computer science major on the team. Um, so at the beginning, my role was to start integrating some of the software packages like uh, the laser plug-in for simulation for Little Pig, but it quickly turned into the development and implementation of the entire navigation software package. And how that's done is there are multiple plugins, packages, and other repositories and examples from um, other users who have built similar robots. And so what I do is I look through that code, decipher it, and try to do this, a similar implementation with Little Pig, uh, both in simulation and in the real world. And so this semester, has really been a lot of uh, simulation and understanding how we can get Little Pig simulated with waypoint navigation. And so um, there are multiple packages that I use, such as Teb Local Planner, which allows me to both take in data, GPS data, IMU data, odometry data, and build a path around GPS coordinates that are input from a text file and allow Little Pig to navigate safely. Um, while also implementing obstacle avoidance at the same time. And so uh, being able to build that path is crucial because in the end, we want Little Pig to be autonomous and able to navigate on its own. And so that's my job. My name is Joseph Chan and my role within Build Team 6 was described. Well, a lot of what I do with, uh, within Build Team 6 was implementing the joystick with Little Pig so that one joystick would control the linear velocity and one joystick would control the angular velocity and you would have to uh, enable, uh, you, you would have to change the enable button to a, a certain button for it to drive and if it was released then a uh, little pig would stop driving and a lot, uh, a lot of what I've also done within uh, Little Pig has also been including and implementing the Hector files that had the plugins within Gazebo which were the IMU and the GPS navigation. The IMU would talk within the odometry that uh, Malachi and Jimmy were working on, and the GPS would also work in very closely with the other packages that Jimmy was working on, so Little Pig could drive autonomously. Hello, my name is Christopher Shellman. I am the project manager for the Build Team 6. Um, my contributions to the Little Pig project uh, have mainly been uh, with regard to signal input um, and uh, data coming into the system. For example, GPS data, um, IMU data that we're pulling from a PixHawk uh, using a package called MatRoss that uh, I sort of dug into and figured out how to use. Um, and then there's also uh, a few other packages that I dealt with. Uh, for example, robot localization, uh, which does some estimations and it pulls data from different places. And it helps the robot to sort of know where it's at in the world um, so that it can you know, make its calculations and do its navigation. Um, I've also been sort of in charge of uh, designing mounts and brackets. Um, since I'm good with CAD, uh, I've been able to help the team mount all the hardware to the system uh, such that the lasers uh, and other systems uh, can be uh, in a good position to sense the world. Use ROS, otherwise known as the robot operating system, as the operating system that controls everything that has to do with the simulation of the robot and the hardware interfacing as well. And the reason we decided to use ROS is because it was very simple in the layout, allowing us to be dynamic in the nodes that we decided to run, which means that we can choose whatever packages we want to use for their software, for the capabilities, for path planning services, or for motor controller services, and it really gives us a full range of options when it comes down to customizing Little Pig to do whatever we want it to do. We decided to go with this 51.8 volt lithium ion battery pack that we designed based around these PCB boards that we got from Jehu Garcia. The batteries have a nominal capacity of 3,000 uh, 
270 watt hours. With this capacity, we're able to test for several hours on end without needing to recharge. So one of the issues we have with Ackerman steering is that we don't have the ability to stop this vehicle on a dime and do a, a 360 turn. We have to work with the uh, chassis we're already built on. Um, and that means we got to understand that both, both wheels are turning at different angles. However, we're only having one motor controlling the wheels. So we got to know how much the, the full vehicle is moving. We got to know how much both wheels are turning. So we got a good idea of where we're at currently in the world. We need a good odometry frame that we can work for, from. Um, but there's packages out there that thankfully do most of these calculations for us. It gives us a really good feedback as to what's going on as long as our sensors are tuned in properly and scaled properly to the real world. Uh, this allows us to map a lot more effectively. Uh, as you can see, the LiDAR module that we have on the front of the vehicle, that's picking up obstacles as we go, especially in this building that we're working in right now. It's picking up ob objects to the left and the right. And if we were running a G-mapping, it would be using SLAM to coordinate that with what's already existence in odometry. And for instance, it'd be picking up those wood, those beams on the left, and it would be building a map based on knowing where it has been in the past and where it will be in the future. Uh, this helps a lot um, over time because we can go back in the same area and it's smart enough to recognize that there's obstacles there and when we start doing autonomous navigation that makes it that plays a big role in the future as you can see on top we got the robotech drive the tx2 and the pixoc equipment that does all the work and all the calculation the robotech is a dual axis drive that is responsible for the propulsion and the steering uh, the propulsion runs on hall sensors and the steering itself works on a coordination of a, a quadrature encoder and also a magnetic position sensor. The magnetic position sensor is cobbled together and we use that for our actual absolute positioning so that our odometry knows where we're at over time. And the uh, incremental encoder is used for the actual magnetic properties of the motor making sure that it is uh, operating correctly. Uh, the Robotech drives runs on CanOpen 301 and CanOpen 402. Although loosely, it has some issues that we've had to work through and making it work with the motors that we're using. Uh, thankfully though, there's can open packages out there that fully uh, implement this and do a really good job. We're also using the Pixoc on top for GPS and the IMU. Uh, what's helpful about this is the packages are already in existence. So even though the device is capable of a lot more, we're able to simply pull the IMU and the GPS off the device directly. And that can be passed in directly into the TX2. This coordinated with the ODOM gives us a very good idea of where we're at in the real world and plays big dividends when we're trying to do autonomous navigation because now we have GPS and IMU on the vehicle and over time we have a good idea of where we're going to